Creating a Netlist Although a SPICE Netlist is automatically generated and passed on to the simulation engine, sometimes you may need to debug the generated Netlist in order to help find errors. So you need to have a basic understanding of the structure of the Netlist, which is what we're going to tackle in this lesson. To begin, we're going to create a schematic for our simulation from scratch. So to begin with, we're going to create a new project. We do that by the menus File, New, Project, and then choose the PCB project. We'll give this a name of my first SPICE project. Put it on the desktop for easy reference, and make sure the Create Project Folder checkbox is enabled. Next, we'll add a schematics sheet to this project with the commands File, New, Schematic. We're going to begin by adding some components. Open up the Libraries panel, and from the miscellaneous devices, let's start with a resistor. So there's a number of ways of doing this, which we've reviewed in the past. Uh, a nice shortcut is within the library, we can add the filter. For example, RES, all components that begin with those three characters. And so what we're going to choose is resistor 1 over here. And you'll see here we've got the symbol and the footprint. And if we click the Place button, we'll have the option of adding multiple values. Um, in this case, we'd like to rotate it 90 degrees, do that with the space bar. And then we'll do a second one. You'll notice just by clicking, the second one appears. And we'll put that right there. And then right-click to terminate, so we do not add a third one. Next, we're going to add a fuse. Again, we go up here and change the uh, filter, F. U.S. for example, and then we have a number of choices. We want to select Fuse 2 in our case, and we can use the Place button, or we can just simply drag the, um, the listing of the component uh, to the schematic. The last element that we need is a voltage source, and we're going to do that by selecting the new library. This one is located in Simulation Sources. remove the filter, and then we can simply navigate to um, the source, the same one that we used in the prior lesson, and again, just drag it to the left. Now there's some other elements that we need to complete our schematic. One is a ground symbol, and if you um, have the uh, wiring toolbar available, I'll pull it out for easy reference here, um, you see we have a ground icon. If I click on that and then move this down to the bottom of our voltage source, click to place it, and what I can do is click and drag away. If you find that the wire is not automatically generated, hold the control key down. And we'll repeat that for a second leg. So click on the icon, drop it right at the pin, right click to terminate, and then I can simply drag that down get a nice spot for it. Um, that also works, by the way, with components. So if I click on the component, connect them together, and then drag away, you'll see that a wire is formed. Again, hold the control key down if you find that behavior doesn't happen automatically for you. To um, add um, some additional wires from the toolbar, we can use that first icon, the, the, two, um, the two little waves, place wire, uh, select that, and then click on the vertices are desired, like so. All our uh, components placed. If I want to neaten this up, I can easily click and drag these components. Now we want to um, do a few other things here. We want to add a voltage value for a voltage source. You'll recall from our last lesson, we can do that by double clicking, going to the models for simulation, click the edit button, and then under the parameters tab, give it a value of 10V. If you want to make that visible, ensure in the parameters section that we enable that uh, value parameter. Click OK. And now we see we've got the 10 volts shown here. I'm going to move that just by clicking on the text only, dragging it. Oh, let's put this to the bottom like so. There we go. See, now we want to make sure our designators are all taken care of. We do that by going to Tools, Annotate Schematic Quietly. Click Yes on the dialog, and now we see we've got all those designators appropriately named. Now we want to add a net label for this net in between the two resistors. 
And we do that by either the place net label command or again from the toolbar, we can choose net label here. And you'll notice I've now got a text attached. If I don't quite like it, hit the tab key to modify the values. So this is going to be called the ref. We'll make it just a little bit smaller in my case. Uh, yours will undoubtedly be a little different. So choose appropriately. But this is where you can change all the parameters, color, uh, orientation, uh, the font, etc. When you're about to place the label, ensure that the red X on the bottom left corner of uh, the text lines up with, in this case, the wire. That way that will be referenced, uh, they will be associated together. And the way you, you can tell that is by moving your cursor over the wire, you'll see that the little pop-up box indicates net vref. Just as a matter of interest, if we do the same thing, hover over another wire that had, does not have a label, it will have a default name. Uh, and essentially it is the uh, designator, in this case F1, underbar, and then the pin name, net F1, underbar 2. And save all my changes using the command file, save all. We will now generate a spice net list. There's two ways of doing it. We can do it from the menus uh, by selecting Design, uh, Netlist for Project, and then choose XSpice. When we do that, this pop-up dialog will appear, and then it's just a question of clicking on OK. Uh, the Messages panel appears, giving us the status, with uh, the last one being the most interesting, Finished Outputs, so that's great. And now if we go to our um, generated tab under advanced sim netlist we'll see here the actual netlist generated in the projects panel if i double click on it i'll open up a second tab which is the netlist before we analyze that there's also another shortcut to um, generate that netlist we can do it again from the toolbar the simulation toolbar which is up here and again i'll pull it into my schematic just to make it more visible so here is the three icons for it, and generating a net list is the third one. Click on that, and you'll notice that it automatically launches. So we've got the messages panel, um, and we have a status report, as well as the net list. So all that happens within a single click. If you don't see that toolbar when you're in a schematic, this toolbar here, go to View, Toolbars, and make sure Mix Sim is enabled. Now let's go back to our net list and analyze what exactly is going on in this file. The generated netlist, which is a .nsx extension, is a compilation of spice commands, output settings, schematic netlist, subcircuits, and device models. The first character of each line in a spice netlist uh, indicates the device type or the command. You'll find this table, table table 2, in the instructions on the eLearn site, so uh, just below the video. So you'll notice that the star or the asterisk is in fact a comment field, so the character indicating that uh, that line is a comment. That first one, uh, my first SPICE project, that's the header, so that does not require a comment field. But all these other ones designating the section, schematic netlist, plot tran, selected circuits analysis, models and subcircuits, uh, that star or asterisk as the first character designates it as a comment. Any periods that you see here, see here for example, dot .save is a spice command. Um, there may be plus signs at the end of a line, which is a continuation character. And then there's specific letters that you'll see here, for example, an X, R, and V. This is specific letters representing spice elements. And this we will see in Table 3. Again, um, you have access to this in the instructions um, in the PDF document immediately below the video on the uh, eLearn site. And we can see here that X refers to a subcircuit, the R is a resistor, and then the V is a voltage source. Now, the X subcircuit. Uh, you see is defined in detail down below under the models and sub-circuits. The way those are connected together is with the keyword fuse. So fuse up here, the name of that sub-circuit is repeated here, sub-circuit fuse. Now looking at the next section, schematic netlist, 
Um, you see here we've got a listing of components, XF1 for example, and then the connected nets to it, net F1 under bar 1, net F1 under bar 2, the parameters, which is current and resistance in this case. The second uh, line for this section, R1, the resistor, has a, um, a net of VREF. That's the same label that we assign. That's why VREF appears is because of this label. And you can see it connects the two resistors together, which are reflected in the net list. So R1 connects to VREF and R2 connects to VREF. And specifically R1 pin 1 because it's first listed in that net list and R2 pin 2 because it's the second one. Following the two nets is the actual value um, of the, um, the component, in this case 1K, and so that's the, uh, the schema for the netlist portion. The plot tran and plot OP lines shown here, Altium Designer specific uh, for the displayed results, so that uh, indicates how the plots will be generated. Selected circuit analysis, that's the configured simulation commands. In this case, the dot OP specifies an operating point command which will be executed, and then there's also the dot option command that will give you some, obviously, options. The models and sub-circuits section, and the last portion, as I mentioned previously, this will include any externally referenced model definition, in our case, the, the fuse, XF1. And this uh, type of organization makes generated NSX files completely standalone. Once they're generated, can be simulated without requiring any external libraries.